Good evening, everyone. Thanks for having me, TechTO team and FinTechTO now. It's exciting to be here. So my name is Bianca. I'm the VP of BioConnect for Business Development and Marketing, and I'm joined by actually our founder and CEO and our BioConnectors uh, just over here, and Will, who leads up our FinTech team. So if you're a FinTech, he's your guy to talk to. So today, really what gets me excited about being here in Toronto is you couldn't think of a more exciting place in given all the political landscape where you have all your target demographics and potential partners in one area. You can go hit all the five banks if you're a fintech company, look at all the great news that's coming up about fintech, are we enemies, are we friends? I think, I think we're past that, I think we're friends. And when I look at some of the things that are coming out, and we'll talk about that through the lenses of BioConnect, is look at RBC, look at all the announcements at, at Vector Institute and AI. This is just goes to show about how much this landscape's changing. And we think about it through the lenses of identity. So my last talk at TechTO was really about the future of identity, and now we're gonna talk about it as we see value for a FinTech community. Identity, we, society has gone on years and years and years of using things like usernames, passwords, keys, FOBs, RSA tokens, up the wazoo. The reason for that is because there needs to be a high degree of security and hopefully a low degree of friction. As we can all appreciate, a lot of authentication methods today are painful. Who here has not forgotten a password or been locked out of something over the past month or two by the raise of hands? See? I, I think we can all appreciate the problem that derives from this notion that the reason why enterprises and society can't trust you to be who you are and have to put these things around you and the things you want to get access to is because there's no way of actually knowing that password belongs to you, which is why you get locked out. So who are we at BioConnect and what is BioConnect ID demo that, I'm gonna sh that we're going to show you today is a notion about how do we use today's technologies from leading biometric vendors to all the cool tech that resides in your phone to actually allow you to be you? So how do we capture things like your face, your finger, your voice, the way you walk, and use that as an authentication method? So for all the developers and techies in the room, when you're building your application, you have to build an onboarding process flow. You have to figure it out. Am I going to put a username and password with 16 characters, two special things? Is it going to have to change every 30 days, six months? If you're in capital markets, good luck with OSFI and all the IROC regulations, right? I, I think I got a laugh out of the room there. Someone has some scars to show. Um, so when we looked at this and we said, how do we, with BioConnect ID, encompass all authentication methods and bring them all to you in one SDK and one set of resting APIs. That's what we do. So for all those FinTech guys in the room that are thinking, how am I gonna do a two-factor authentication? Am I gonna have a two-app experience? Am I gonna depend on someone else? Am I gonna code it myself? Look at us through the lenses, and I'm gonna show you through our app. So Will, let's just go into our app. This is our application. So look at the dashboard. Here's where Will would we have all his identities from logging in online, to unlocking a door, to creating a passcode. These are some of the suggested apps that Will uses very frequently. So if think about a world where your FinTech company, your bank, your healthcare, your ed tech company could start and launch without ever putting a username and password. So let's go into the profile and go with the idea that Will could start with just his biometric. And you gotta love demos. Let's, do you wanna just launch this? There we go. So Will's gonna prompt an authentication request and he's gonna start that authentication by just using his set of eyes. So now Will has used effectively his eyes who are converted inside of BioConnect ID, secured and encrypted, and now that has allowed him to go in. So now think about another flow. Think about the fact that you wanna send a money transfer. You want to transfer your friend money, and you don't want to tell them a personal verified question because, I don't know, you just don't want to do it. Why sh should you have to do it? So now he's going to go into it and do an authentication. He's going to use his voice. 
seven zero nine five. Oh, apparently he's unsuccessful. <laughs> we can do a face though. No, you could you could do it again. He's successful now. He's faced. I don't want to get close to him. I gave him a microphone and just messed the whole thing up. Uh, so so the microphones aside, the whole notion of how do you change that onboarding experience? How do you reduce friction? Because when you think about it through the lenses of fintech, all the user's trying to get is to your services. How many screens and how many steps are you going to put them through? So the way that we look at this is we've provided, and we're going to be launching to our fintech partners and some of our banking partners, the set of API and SDKs. So now think about putting that into your app. So if you're, instead of you having multiple usernames, multiple passwords, you're tokenizing that person's identity and then pushing that through all the applications. So inside of BioConnect ID, um, we'll be having 217 apps in the App Store. And these are things from LastPass to Google Auth to Snapchat. So if you want to keep things private, instead of having a passcode, maybe you just use your face or your girlfriend doesn't figure it out what your passcode is. So from that to all the way to replacing RSA tokens. So let's maybe create a one-time password and, and see the request. Pick your biometric. <laughs> And now that automatically generates a one-time passcode. So instead of you having to be just bound by a set of numbers that's turning you out, what you're doing is putting a live face and knowing that I'm me to generate then starting that request. Our demo is super simple, so I'm going to leave the rest of my time for QA because that's how simple this app and uh, authentication is. Um, all we do inside of our SDK is specialize and vet biometric modalities. I'm not sitting here saying that this is the only authentication method, but how do you get to the haven that you can just be you? That's what we live for at BioConnect. So thanks. <laughs> Questions? I had some interesting ones I'll talk to you. No one has a crush. I put everyone to sleep. What's the biggest obstacle for adoption of biometrics? I think that historically biometrics has had a fame of creepy. So, and that really stems from the fact that biometrics as an industry started after 9-11. The US government poured a ton of money and said, I need to figure it out who is boarding my planes because I better be sure that you are who you say you are or your identity is who you say you are. So you started to see this, and this was caused by law enforcement, which from a perception perspective, I still get people asking me, like, are you keeping people's faces and fingers? Get with the program, guys. The, the technology has advanced tremendously. So today, uh, we're actually not storing people's faces and fingers. What we're doing is translating that and making that into really a series of zeros and ones to make it simple. So I think one of, when I, a long way of answering your question is, I think perception today, it's still an inhibitor. But then when I look at the positive side, you now walk around with these things called phones, and they now have six or seven ways you can pick up biometrics. So I think it's starting to be a massive commonplace, um, and you're starting to see people go, well, I can just use my finger. Why do I have to have a password? Or I can just tap this thing. And, and, and I think that's one of the reasons why you're seeing the change in the industry. Not sure if that answers your question completely. Someone else had another hand next to you. Uh, yeah, with uh, many players in security, how do you stand out? Many players in that's a that's a loaded big question, but uh, many players in security. So security is a very big space. So you can be in security from a cybersecurity threat metrics perspective. You can be in a security space as just actual physical security. Uh, we live in the securing of you. So how do we stand out? We're the only and largest biometric player in the world. We have spent eight years in biometrics. So the way we stand out is we specialize in finding a way to securely translate who you are into a piece of technology that an enterprise can consume and scale. Yeah? 
Love that question. Always comes up. Spoofing. So the question, guys, for the, those of you who didn't hear it, is can it be hacked with a photograph? For sure. There's lots of technologies out there that are just basic recognition and can be hacked with a photograph. We've all put our faces on Snapchat, ended up with the little bunny ears over here instead of over here. Uh, what we use, every single modality that we use inside of our platform, uh, we test for spoofing and hacking. So what's the time bound? What is the liveliness? We've done testing to the effect of actually putting someone's uh, picture and making holes so you move the eyes only. We've done, picture, uh, we've done testing with like videoing someone's eyes and then replaying it. So there's lots of ways that the technology can be um, encrypted to ensure that that does not take place. Love that question. So a lot of, uh, for, for the blockchain or trusted identity or distributed identity geeks in the room, happy to geek out after, uh, the whole notion of the first time you onboard someone, um, unless you have a consortium of everyone's faces and fingers like the US government might have uh, for law enforcement, you can't actually know today that I am me. Uh, when you're providing AML regulatory changes this year are coming up to push for uh, biometric as a method of authentication, but think about it from the perception of, I'm Brazilian, so if I walk into a bank and hand my ID, the banker doesn't really know what my ID looks like, and he's just kind of looking at me and, and saying, yeah, it kind of matches you, and that becomes the place of record. So when you think from an inverse correlation perspective, if you, do you think if you had a fintech app or a bank app, and you put there, the beginning registration is not a, just a piece of plastic or a series of passwords, it was actually your face that the bad guy would want to put their face there. So there's some interesting s statistics and, and, and understanding of how that changes over time and the inverse correlation of the bad people really not. The creepiness works to our advantage in that industry. So, so today, you can't really know until you get the consortium, but over time, you have that opportunity to re-register. So if I lost my phone or if I lost my account, I have the ability of re-enrolling without knowing anything else. Um, so how often do you have to update that biometric identification, um, I'm, if I, at all? I, I'm going to take a stab at what I think the question is. Yeah. Um, well, I age just about every minute dealing with banks, which I'm sure you can all appreciate. So <laughs> have some scars to prove it. RBCers in the room, I love you all dearly. Uh, but the notion, what you're asking me is dynamic identity. So biometrics change, your voice changes, your face changes. Um, so inside, I can speak for our technology that part of our uh, algorithm and logic is that every time you're doing an authentication, if this is a basic password, all the system is getting normally is a yes or no, right? Sending a token saying, yep, it matches this thing. With biometrics, you're capturing that change over time and you're learning and adapting. So the algorithm is continuously changing, basic regression for the AI geeks in the room, but uh, it's continuously changing and, and sort of adapting Bianca a little bit more. Cool, thank yeah. you. Yeah, you're welcome. I think I'm getting the plug. Thanks everyone for having us. Take care. You know, oh, God. oh, my marketing team's gonna my marketing team's gonna murder me. There is uh, on our website, just go to bioconnect.com slash fintechto. Thank you so much. <laughs>